So, how do we fix this problem? Because, uh, like, I didn't know I was doing it. I was just accidentally causing phasing issues in all of my mixes. That's why a lot of people struggle with low end, I think. Hello, Internet. Welcome back to Slay Studio. Today, we're talking about something really cool. It's called linear phase. <laughs> So I was just doing some research online about this thing called linear phase and the problem is that when you use stock plugins or you use regular EQ, you actually end up messing up the phase of the waveform. So hold on, let me explain what that means. Phase is roughly just where a wave is in its cycle. Um, so for example, we'll use a really basic wave, this is called a sine wave. You've seen it before. Um, it sounds like this. And if I take another one and I put it here, um, then if we play these guys at the same time, we'll have constructive interference. So the crests of the waves line up. They're in phase. So then we have twice the amplitude of a resultant wave. Uh, physics. Yeah. So what we can do then is we take one of these waves and we just slide it just a little bit. And um, now if we play these waves at the same time, we're going to get something that is not in phase. So the only thing that happens when two waves are out of phase is just that it gets a little bit quieter. The last position besides any kind of out of phaseness you can have is phase cancellation, which is the worst overall. So you have all of the crests of one wave lining up with the troughs of another. Sorry, I didn't move this. There you go. Um, so all of the crests and the troughs line up. Um, so when they add them together, then you actually get no sound at all. So that's phase. So yeah, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Um, so when you use a regular EQ, like an Ableton EQ, um, something like this, then when you go to EQ a sound, then you end up messing up the phase where the slope is greatest on the EQ curve. And if you use really, really steep EQ, then you have a high risk of actually messing up the phase, and that's a huge problem especially when you're working with stuff like room mics and double mics, if you're working with two guitars that you played exactly the same, but they're just like slightly different, then you could potentially introduce phase cancellation. So clearly this is a problem, and a lot of people are unknowingly introducing artifacts and phasing into their mixes. Woohoo, okay. Um, should have put that in the disclaimer of the video. Should have put that in the disclaimer, Ableton. Um, but I will say that it did change the way that I understand mixing now. So how do we reach a solution? Well, so there are some people who are amazing and really smart at FabFilter and they've created a plugin. Um, it's been around for years, I think now, um, but it has a linear phase mode. That linear phase mode takes a little bit of latency, um, but you're completely open to all of the benefits of a regular EQ but you get to keep your linear face. Amazing. Okay, so I have come up with a small little piano thing and um, we're gonna be doing some various things to it, um, but here is what it sounds like completely unaffected. Right, so it's just a nice little piano melody. Uh, I thought it was really nice, wanted to turn it into something. Um, this piano is really, really dark and it's really nice, but a lot of times I like to EQ the high end really aggressively to bring out um, some of those frequencies. So for example, I'll go like this. So you can hear as I sweep that um, the high end there's really, you could, there's nothing much here. So um, if I just boost a little bit, it definitely brings up the clarity of the piano and I, I really do enjoy that. But one of the downsides, as we've seen, of EQing is that 
you introduce phasing. So it completely distorts the quality of the sound. And I've been doing this for years and not realizing what I was doing. So we're gonna do a test. We have an EQ3. And this EQ3 has just like a low, a mid, and a high. It's just like an EQ8. So imagine if we had, uh, you know, bands like this. We have a, a low, a mid, and a high. You know, it's not quite exactly like this, but um, it's it's fairly similar. We want more mids, um, less mids, more highs, less highs. Right, so this is just a way that we can shape the sound. So I've set up an EQ3 here, reducing the lows by about four decibels, increasing the mids by about three decibels, and increasing the highs by six decibels. Like I said, this is a pretty aggressive change, but I think adds more clarity to the piano. So let's hear this. So you can hear the huge difference that it's making in the clarity of the sound. However, we are getting a lot of phase cancellation in there because every time we have a break from low to mid and mid to high, we're introducing phase cancellation. One way to get around this is actually, uh, I've created my own rack in which we have perfect linear phase. So no phasing is going on. We have no phase cancellation. And, um, I'll try to explain how it works. So here we have the low, the mid, and the high gain, just like we had on the, the EQ3 here. We have the same low, mid, and high gains, exactly the same values. Well, not exactly the same. There you go. Okay, um, six decibels. Then we have uh, the low cutoff here, which is gonna be the same over here. Let's just make sure that's exactly the same. 204 hertz, right, with the frequency low. And the high cutoff is gonna be the same as the frequency high. Okay, so this is a basic way that we can imitate what an EQ3 does, but do it with linear phase. And I'll show you why this is really important on a piano. So we're gonna record <laughs> the same EQ changes with the uh, linear phase algorithm instead. And here's what that sounds like. phase EQ is definitely more rich than the EQ3 and that's because we're canceling all of those frequencies in the low mids. Ugh, it's disgusting. So that's just something that we need to be aware of, right? This is something that I do all the time accidentally canceling frequencies and I didn't even realize I was doing it. The linear phase EQ, let's just pick this one, it doesn't matter which one we pick, but if we invert the phase of one of them and we play them both together we can hear the difference between the two of them. So here we go, here's the difference between the two. Wow, okay, that is a lot. That's a lot of frequencies. <laughs> so just to play these all again one more time. So here is what's going on when you use regular EQ. It's disgusting. There's so much phasing going on. If you're working on something that just has piano and you want to do small EQ adjustments, it's really, really important that you know about linear phase 
because otherwise you're going to be introducing so many artifacts and phase cancellation and you're going to be trying to mix it properly and it just doesn't work. Here is the practical application for linear phase. So say for example, I really like the EQ that I had, but I want to just modulate it on the fly. So I put this linear phase three-way processing inside of a dry wet rack. So with one knob, I can change the brightness of my piano, right? So this absolutely works with linear phase. take the same EQ3 that we had before, um, and instead, if we put that in here, and we try to do exactly the same thing, it doesn't work, because we get phase cancellation. There's like one sweet spot in the middle around 40, 50, 60 mix, where we get terrible, terrible phase cancellation. so much less smooth than the linear phase version. I'll do that one more time. Even at the 55 range, we still have really nice clear low mids, and that's because everything's in phase. So this was something that really opened my eyes, and I hope it opened yours too. Also, I do have a Discord channel. I want to plug that. It's in the description below. If you want to come hang out, ask me some questions, feel free to do so. I'll be around. Um, maybe make some stuff live. We'll see. <laughs> uh, see you around.